Cindy, our architect of the Climate Action Plan, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I know that you and I are both so proud of all that we've accomplished to date. We just adopted new climate action goals to reach net zero by 2040. And you and I have been celebrating the fact that we passed legislation to ban natural gas and new construction. We've celebrated 25 years of composting and our plan to get to 100% renewable electricity five years ahead of schedule. So given all these achievements and all that we have to celebrate, what are we gonna do to make sure we meet these new goals? Thanks, Debbie, for having me. And it's, our accomplishments are pretty remarkable, aren't they? Just to think what we've done in a short period of time. Um, and so I think what's the first thing I think about when we're looking to implement our climate action plan is we do have this amazing track record. Since 1990, we've been able to reduce our emissions by 41%. And in sectors where we've had intense policy development, such as commercial buildings, we've actually reduced our emissions by 68%. Wow. So we need to take that same intensity that we've been applying to commercial buildings and spread it to the rest of the sectors. Um, the first thing that's really important is we have this amazing plan. And one thing that's great about this plan is that it's extremely detail-oriented. Yep. We have over 30 strategies and 120 supporting actions. And all of these actions are time-bound, they have dates, they have lead agencies, they have key performance indicators, and they also have equity metrics. So this plan really sets up a system for us to move forward. And as we move forward, it, it's very critical that we monitor our progress. Yeah. And we're gonna set up this very comprehensive monitoring and evaluation program to make sure that we track every strategy, hmm. every indicator, and every metric to make sure that we're seeing the progress we need to meet those important goals. Wow, that's a lot of detail. And there's, mm -hmm. it's so important to be accountable. I think about at the COP26, how much frustration there was at government doing blah, 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 and setting goals, but no action. In San Francisco, we're serious about our action, and we have a lot of detail to prove it and accountability. In fact, when I think about our plan, I think that if all we wanted to achieve was carbon reductions, we could just say, sing, simple sentence, eliminate fossil fuels. But we want a city that we want to live in that can thrive for everyone. And therefore, our plan needs to have all that interconnection in order for it to make sense and give us that city that we all deserve. So this is not the first climate action plan for San Francisco, nor is it the first and only climate action plan in the world. But in San Francisco, we like to think of ourselves as being a little unique. So what is it about San Francisco's climate action plan that makes it unique? That's a great question. So this climate action plan covers six different sectors. Um, we look at some of the more traditional sectors that most climate action plans cover, such as transportation and land use, building operations, energy supply but we've added a couple really unique ones to San Francisco. Um, one is housing. Um, and this is the section of the plan that I'm really most proud of. Hmm. Uh, in San Francisco, we know for the last decade, we've had an affordable housing crisis, but people don't really know that a housing crisis is also a climate crisis. What's important for us to see is that affordable housing in San Francisco is really a key driver in reducing our emissions. Hmm. When we look at housing policy, if we're gonna continue to have low density, single family zoning in San Francisco, that will just drive uh, economically non-diverse communities and increase climate pollution. We need to be building dense infill compact housing in San Francisco hmm to make sure that we're able to keep our residents here and our new residents that are coming have a small carbon footprint. Yeah, because the longer people commute to get to San Francisco, the bigger their carbon footprint. 
because of all that gasoline that they may be using trying to drive here from far away. Absolutely. So clearly, this plan, with all of its detail and all of its accountability, didn't happen overnight. I know it was a labor of love for you. Can you describe the process that it took to pull this plan together? Absolutely. Um, so this plan didn't start with me. This plan started with the residents of San Francisco. In 2019, they really demanded change. And at that time, the Board of Supervisors passed a climate resolution, a climate emergency resolution, really saying, we are all taking this seriously and need to act now. And that was really the impetus for our plan, starting with people. And that was an important through line to the completion of the plan. After we kind of took this people-centered approach, we took a data-driven approach. We really looked at the baseline data. We wanted to monitor energy consumption and make sure that we had a lot of data supporting our metrics and our end results. And we worked a lot, not only with residents, but with city departments. You know, we ended up working with 20 different city departments in San Francisco. San Francisco has a large and impactful government, but working with that many people can be challenging. What was amazing though, is that we were all very driven and we all had the same goals, but sometimes we differed in how we got there. And so there, we spent a lot of time negotiating, making sure that every strategy and every action was perfect and was gonna make us get our end results together. Wow, so start with people, mm -hmm informed by data, mm -hmm. collaborate between departments, experts, and everyone who wants to come to the table, and attention to detail. That is an amazing combination and something to be so proud of. Well, Cindy, today's event is going to be listened to by a whole lot of different types of people. We are going to have activists and experts and community members from all walks of life. And even people from around the world will be watching as we are part of this larger countdown event. So in closing, what would you tell all those people who are watching us today? What message do you want to leave them with? Debbie, if you think about the theme of today's event, hope in a heated planet, hope is just such a necessary sentiment, especially in today's uh, society. So I think starting with hope and leading to action is just critical. And the two of them will feed off each other and create a lot of momentum as we move forward. You know, no action is too small. We need each and every action. And as you do all these great things to start to reduce climate change, talk about it. You know, just don't do it, talk about it. The more we talk about it, the more conversations we have, the more it will go viral and the more successful we'll be. Truly, every person makes a difference. The world is run by those who show up. Let's show up for the climate. Let's show up today for our climate action plan. Thank you so much, Cindy, for all of your hard work, your commitment, your perseverance, your intelligence, your empathy. You bring it all together, and I am so lucky to count you as a colleague. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you for your leadership.